Hey everyone, we're going to see how to do faceted search uh, with full text search in Couchbase NoSQL with Node.js. Um, so in case you're not familiar with what uh, a facet is in full text search, um, think about Amazon. So I'm on an Amazon web page and it's not just restricted to just Amazon, but I've entered a term, a search term, um, which I've declared as Pokemon. Uh, facets might be this category criteria on the left to let me narrow down my search. Um, so a facet is an aggregation against a search result. Um, so for example, uh, stuffed animals and plush toys might have a count of how many further results there are uh, for the Pokemon uh, search term. Uh, but this is what you can see is, is where we're kind of going with things. So we're going we're gonna to do a search. Uh, we're going to see a list of facets, and then we're going to narrow down our search in Couchbase uh, with Node.js. Uh, so let me go ahead and cancel out of Amazon. Um, up on my screen, I do have Couchbase server uh, running. This is the Couchbase server dashboard. Before we start developing, uh, what we will want to do is we will want to configure a bucket, and we will want to configure indexes for that bucket. So this is Couchbase server 5. Um, so anything above 5 uh, will work for this example, anything that just really supports full text search. Um, so as far as my buckets go, um, I have one bucket, but this isn't the bucket that we're going to be using. Instead, we're going to be using a sample bucket. So if we go to settings and if we go to sample buckets, we're actually going to be using uh, the beer sample. And we're doing that because uh, not only does it give us records to work with, uh, but it's actually good records for uh, using facets. And you'll see in just a second. So I did install it. We can go back to buckets. Um, there are 7,300 records in this bucket. And if we look at the, the data in this bucket, uh, we can actually look at one of these records. Um, so we do have a type. Um, and in the case of where we have a beer, which is what we're going to be searching against, so let's, let's go ahead and find an ale. Uh, if we have a type beer, we're going to be looking at categories as our facet. So we're going to be able to narrow down our search based on the type of beer that we're searching for. Um, so we don't have an, a search index created yet, um, so we can't do full text search. So you will want to click the, the search tab, uh, and then we will want to add an index. So let's go ahead and, and call it uh, beer search. You can name it whatever you want. This is the name for your index. Uh, and we're going to be uh, adding this index for the beer sample bucket. We're going to leave the identifier as uh, the default, which is type, uh, because these documents do have a type property. Um, and we can actually map to that type property in the type mappings. Um, so we will disable the default. We don't want to be able to search the entire document. Uh, for performance reasons, you should probably narrow down exactly what you want to be searchable. Uh, but we're going to add a mapping. This mapping is going to be called beer. So we know how we have a document called type, and we know that our type can equal beer. So we're only going to be searching beer documents. And we're going to say only index the specific fields that we declare. Uh, so that way it's not the entire document itself. Um, so now that we have this mapping, let's go ahead and add some fields that we can search against. So we're going to say insert child field. And we're going to say for this one, let's go ahead and we're going to say we want to search against the description. So if we find something that's very hoppy or flavorful, uh, we can search against that uh, because it'll be in the description. We're going to say store. Um, so that way, if we wanted to, we could return the description in our full text search result set. Um, it's not absolutely necessary, uh, but it for this example, it might make sense. So let's go ahead and click OK. We're going to add another field mapping. So insert child field, and we're going to call this one category. And for now, we're just going to click store. We're going to be coming back to this index to make some changes, but I want to make it clear on why things are happening the way that they're happening. Um, so for, for now, we're just going to keep the two fields consistent. I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to say create index. Now, we give it a second. We wait for the, the index to update. Um, all right, it's updated. Uh, and now we're going to say, let's go ahead and search for uh, coffee flavored beer. So we're going to search, uh, and it does come up with results. So we can see where the, the search hit. We can see the categories. Uh, for this page, it looks like they're all, well, not all of them are North American ale. There's an Irish ale in there. Um, but we do have a, a diverse set of results that we can work with. And like I said, we're going to be editing this index uh, shortly. Uh, but for now, uh, let's leave it as is. Now what we want to do is we want to create our Node.js application. Well, actually, before that, make sure that you do have a user role created um, and make sure that it has FTS searcher ability. 
I just my my user will be able to work with all uh, buckets, but definitely design your your user to how best meets your needs. Uh, so I'll leave it on the search tab. Uh, let's go ahead into our uh, terminal. We're going to create a new Node.js project. Um, so on the desktop, I'm going to say make uh, FTS project, name it whatever you want, and then navigate into it. And I'm going to say npm init hyphen y. And all that does is it just creates a package.json file uh, inside that directory. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to install Couchbase to it. So we can say npm install Couchbase hyphen hyphen save. It will uh, download Couchbase and it will add it to the package.json file. All right, uh, so it is good. Uh, we need to create our project file now so that way we can add all of, all of our code to it. So we're going to say uh, touch app.js and we're going to say let's open it with our editor of choice. In this case, I'm going to be using Atom. doesn't really matter what you use. This is just a preference thing. So we can open up app.js. It's empty right now. Uh, we do need to add some code so we can say constant uh, and I'll, I'll zoom in a bit here. Uh, constant and we can say uh, couchbase equals require couchbase, which is what we had just installed. We can say constant cluster equals new couchbase dot cluster. Uh, and we're going to say uh, the node, we only have one node for this instance. Um, and that node is on um, this right here. It'll be different for yours. Just make sure you don't have the HTTP in there. My Chrome added it. Uh, that will definitely throw you off. So just include the actual host name or the IP, not the not the port. We're going to say cluster.authenticate. So we're going to enter our user and password information now. So mine was called demo and the password was just 123456. After we've authenticated to our cluster, we can say a constant bucket equals cluster.open bucket. And our bucket was called uh, beer sample. All right. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to do it's, it's more for convenience is we're going to kind of shorthand some of these um, these classes. So what we're going to say is we're going to say constant search query equals couchbase dot search query. Now, I mean, when we're going through this, we could easily do this every time, but you know what? It makes it makes it a lot easier, more attractive if we just said search query. And we're going to do something similar. We're going to say constant. We're going to say search facet equals couchbase dot search facet. And again, you don't have to do this, uh, but for the conveni convenience of things, um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. All right. Uh, so we're connected to our couchbase instance. Uh, let's go ahead and issue just a very simple query. So we're going to say var and we're going to say term query and we're going to call this our first term query. So one, name it whatever you want. We're going to say search query dot term. Let's go ahead and search for coffee like we did with the UI. And we're going to search against a particular field rather than all possible fields. So we're going to search against um, the description. Now, if you left off the field, uh, it would search for all possible fields in that index, um, but we're specifying description. Now we're going to say var query one being our first query, and we're going to say search query dot new. We're going to provide the index, which is beer search, and we're going to pass in uh, term query one. Now, what we want to do is we want to add uh, our facet. So we want to we want to add the, the field that we're going to get aggregate property information about. So we're going to say query one dot add facet. We're going to give it a name. This could be any name, but it makes sense to say categories. And then we're going to say search facet dot term. And the term is actually going to be our property. So this one has to exist in our document. So it's going to be category singular. We're also going to provide how many possible search terms um, should be returned in the result. So there could be more than five in this example, but I want to limit it to five uh, search terms to be returned or aggregated against. All right, the next step is I want to say query dot one, not query one, 
and I want to provide a result limit because there's a lot of results. There's there's 7,300 possible results. So I'm just going to limit it to three for this example. And now we can actually execute that query. So we're going to say bucket dot query query one. And as a response, uh, we're either going to get an error, a result, or meta information. And we're going to work with all of this in a second. All right. So what we want to do is we want to loop through that result set. So we're going to say four, and we're going to say var i equals zero, i less than result dot length, and then i plus plus. And we're going to print out these hits. So these are going to be matches. So we're going to say console dot log. We're going to say hit. And we're going to say result i dot id. And we're just going to run it to see where we stand so far. See if what we've done so far works. So back in my terminal, I'm going to say node app.js. And it found three matches because that's all it should have found because I limited it to three in it. And these are the actual document IDs that had a match of coffee. So if we wanted to, let's go ahead and, and, and uh, cancel this application and go back. And let's go ahead and add facet information. So we're going to say console.log facet. And we're going to say meta.facets. And we're going to say we only want the categories facet. And we want to say the terms. So let's go ahead and rerun this application. And you can see this time uh, we have facet information along with the hit. Um, so for example, um, and this is, uh, remember, it's not a loop. These are the same facets uh, for all documents. Um, we, we, didn't, we didn't loop it. It's just meta facets. Um, but for example, there are 50 of whatever this American is, or 50 North, 19 Irish. Now, you might be wondering, well, those terms are may not look correct. Because if I go back to Couchbase, the dashboard, and I go to Buckets, and I look at the documents, and I click on this stout here, uh, well, we have a more descriptive category, North American Ale. And the reason for this is because our index needs to be altered a little bit. So if we go to search and we go to edit our index and we go to category, let's go ahead and edit it. Uh, we left the analyzer as inherit uh, whatever was the master analyzer, which would be standard. Uh, what we want to do is we want to change that analyzer to keyword. And we're doing that because the different analyzers tokenize uh, our strings differently. So by leaving it as the standard, it's going to tokenize it based on uh, the space character, maybe some other stuff as well. But if we leave it as keyword for this particular field, it's going to leave the whole uh, category. So let's go ahead and update it. Uh, wait for it to update a second. And it'll be very fast. All right, it's updated. Now if I go back to my terminal and cancel out, and then I rerun it, this time around the terms are uh, more accurate. So German lager, Belgian, uh, Irish, things like that. And remember we only did three results. If I had done 100 results, these this, this uh, list of facets might be a lot larger. Uh, but for our result set, this is what we get. Now. What we want to do actually is we want to narrow down our search because in a realistic scenario, we do our search for coffee, we have our list. Now we want to say, you know what, I only want to find coffee beers that are German lagers. So the user will have interacted in some fashion to click German lager uh, to see four possible results. But we're going to still limit it to three. Um, but let's go ahead and narrow that down. And we're going to comment out the, the old code because this is, uh, in a, again, in a realistic scenario, the user will have intervention. Uh, we're not doing user inter intervention here. So we're going to say var tq2, and we're going to say equals, and we're actually going to add a secondary search uh, criteria. So for our secondary search criteria, we're going to say search query dot term. And the term this time around is going to be German logger. And for our German logger, we're going to be searching against a particular field, not the description. So we're going to say field. This is going to be category. We're going to say query 
let's say var query two equals search query dot new. It's going to be against the beer search. Uh, but this time around, uh, we can't just provide one term because we're, we're, we need it to be the coffee flavored stuff from the description. And we also need it to be the German logger. So we have to do a different type of query. We have to do what's called a conjunctive uh, query. Um, so before I populate line 24, let's go ahead and add another line here. So we're going to say var and we're going to say uh, conjunction. Now you can debate whether it's conjunctive or conjunction. I'm just going to call it conjunction. Um, ignore my grammar if, if it's wrong, but we're going to say search query dot conjuncts and we're going to provide all possible search terms. So we're going to say T1, uh, TQ1, and TQ2. Remember, we still have on line 10, TQ1 here. Uh, and you can provide more if you wanted, but these are our two terms. And uh, for this parameter on line 25, we're going to say conjunction. Now we can say uh, query uh, two dot add facet. Let's just copy and paste. We're going to copy and paste uh, two lines here and change from query one to query two on both of these. Uh, because you, ideally what's going to happen is uh, our facets, when we print them out this time, it's just going to say German logger. Uh, and that's, that's our expected result. Um, I'm also going to copy and paste this bucket.query. And we're executing query two. We're going to comment out line 12 uh, through 20, because remember, these are asynchronous events. Uh, it won't be valuable to us to run them both asynchronously. So we're going to assume that we're on the second phase of this. Uh, we're doing our two step after they've clicked German logger and we're going to rerun it and see what we get. So in this case, we have three results and these are two, not two, three different coffee flavored beers that are considered German lagers. So we've just narrowed down our search criteria. Now it doesn't have to end at just one step. Um, there could be many search criteria. So for example, in the, in the case of Amazon, maybe, maybe I search for Pokemon and then I click books. And then there was another search criteria called children's books. Um, so you can, you could keep narrowing down the facets. Um, and, uh, with those facets, you of course see the aggregate information. There's four possible results here. Um, so it's very, it's very powerful stuff. Uh, again, you probably would want to do this with user interaction. Um, not, not the way that I did it here, but at least you can get an understanding on how uh, you would use that facet information with Node.js um, to better do uh, full text search with Couchbase.